Hello everybody, my name's Dick Coughlin, and as most of you who are regular viewers of mine, um, for those of you who are new, I've been around quite a while. Yes, I am. In that time, as... Uh, now, in that time, I have seen a lot, and I've done a lot. And one thing about me is, you know, I'm very bad sometimes when it comes to throwing things out or getting rid of certain things. I'm not a hoarder as such, I'm just incredibly lazy. However, one particular area where I do tend to become a bit of a hoarder is in the accumulation of various images and screenshots that I take. Now, I got my first iPhone way back in 2011, so in the course of the last nine years, I have accumulated and still have in my folder, in my images folder on my phone, in fact, before, in fact, I just checked before recording this and I have currently 17,953 images on there, right? Only half of which are of my penis, right? But there's so many images there and there's a lot that, you know, many of you, I, I've used a lot, but there's a lot that I haven't used. And there's some that, you know, and I just think there's, the, the, what I've got here effectively is a kind of like electronic archaeological dig because you can go all the way back all the way back to 2011 up to the present day and see everything that I every image I've downloaded and taken a screenshot of for the purposes of making a video and like I said a lot of the content I've never used and I thought I've got like a little time capsule here so I've decided what I want to do I've been I started going through them systematically uh, a little while back and what I'm going to do is a is a you know is a video series here where I'm just going to literally show you or give you you know a sort of you know brief summary as brief as I can possibly make it of the last decade by showing you some of my personal favorite images and screenshots that I've taken over the course of the last nine to ten years now first I just have to say this these are not in chronological order, and I have no idea how long this video series will go on. And I don't, not 100% sure, but I think there's about 230 of them in this fucking, you know, in this video alone. But I thought some of you might like to see a little insight into a little, the tip of the iceberg of the absolute batshittery that I have dealt with over the course of the last 10 years. So I hope you enjoy this. So here is, ladies and gentlemen, a decade of screenshots, part one. How many of these do you remember? Like that time I got this comment from an Onision fan telling me Onision is God. Stop judging him for being right. Which unfortunately had much better spelling than this comment from a Pat Condell fan telling me you're a cock mate, Pat Condell. 1L is about 1000.000.0 better than you. Or this tweet by a Count Dankula fan who decided to, to try and report me for a hate crime uh, by linking the Nazi to their aptitude video and tweeting it at the Metropolitan Police despite the fact that I don't live in London and their, and their Twitter account specifically says do not try and report crimes via a tweet. Or this comment from a Daily Mail reader saying I'm worried that homosexuality will become compulsory. This PM I got from someone who clearly had only subscribed to me three minutes before sending it asking me why do I use the word bitch. Oh boy, have you got some surprises coming in. This comment from a guy saying the problem with feminism is it's arguing for a, for a group right and not a individual right and that it's it, that's its fatal flaw. Feminism is at its core lesbians and man haters. Dot dot. Or this comment from a guy saying won't be long until men are accused of raping their mothers because they inflicted pain on them when they gave birth to them. Technically we didn't ask permission. Or this screenshot, who remembers the time that Donald Trump was actually banned from Twitter for 12 minutes by some hero over at the Twitter offices who apparently decided to do it because it was their last day and they thought, fuck it. One recurring character in this video is Ian Miles Chong, who sits here, who claims that feminists will accuse you of rape and male feminists will rape you. Both deserve each other. Funny how neither of them have taken an interest in you though, Ian. How about this genuine image of an actual real person who exists? This is a Finnish politician whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce, but it's that mass of words over on the right hand side of the picture. And that is a real picture. He's a member of the Finnish National Party and he literally calls himself Black Hitler. 
One of my most glorious moments on the internet, the day I managed to get Creeping Sharia as the number one hashtag just to wind up Tommy Robinson. Or this wonderful comment exchange between two, gu between two guys that basically, let's be honest, sums up 99% of political discussion and debate on the internet. This tweet by Mark Dice saying, Hate speech is like Bigfoot, only complete morons believe it exists. This is a guy who believes the Illuminati are working with aliens. Right. Or this genuine Google search that I found once after I googled my own name on the website topsex.net on Lesbian Squirters video. To this day, I still have not had the guts to click on that link, which is weird considering I live on my own. Or this, a genuine video title for a genuine video that about a genuine debate and discussion that actually took place between, between a group of people who are the same species as you and I, why child pornography and underage sex is wrong. Who knew? Or these tweets by a woman called Bro saying, okay, the Holocaust was horrible, but Jewish people who say it shouldn't have happened are annoying because then there would, would never have been an Israel. Like, what you are saying, are you dumb? Apparently so, darling. Or this right-wing racist who left this comment underneath one of my YouTube videos and actually managed to misspell the racial slur Packy in two different ways in the same sentence. How about this hilarious tweet by Sargon in which he claims he's not alright, in fact the system he wants to implement is so liberal that he's gonna starting to consider himself a fucking radical individualist, says the guy who was a member of UKIP. This comment I got from one guy saying, as a non-Muslim living in an Islamic country, I support the American Republicans who are fighting against the vile agenda of Islam, Islamists and Democrats. Please don't let your beautiful country become an Islamic shithole. And I love how he censored shithole because that's the most offensive part about this. From the user Hard Truth, so you know it's real. This comment from a John Tron fan. Actually, John is a centre-left classical liberal who believes that the gene pool should remain pure. Or this guy who makes me glad that Trump got in power because good luck faggots run America under Hillary dykes want to eliminate the male sex. They will quote harvest, I don't know why he's put it in quotations, a few stunningly beautiful Adonis studs and pass them around in a sort of reverse gang rape if you will. Has there ever been a better use of the words if you will? They've got Obama by the balls. He knows those FEMA camps are for men, but he can't say anything or they'll out him. This tweet by Ryan Simmons saying, all liberals are libtarded and worship gay vegan butt sex. This tweet by Bookworm, I think that's ironic, at least the KKK doesn't want to wipe out people they disagree with. You seem perfectly happy with it, yo. Well, this is one of my favourite comments left by a Holocaust denier who apparently has issues regarding his short-term memory. The Holocaust never happened, but it should happen again. This tweet by Paul Joseph Watchin, which triggers verified libtards the most? My profile pic, because it's sepia. My profile pic, because I'm smoking in it. My slogans or my map. Uh, you know, this is the equivalent of that clip in The Young Ones where Rick says, hands up, who likes me? This Facebook comment saying the globalists are using cats to depopulate whites because cats act as surrogate babies. They cause white women to not want to have kids. Cats are like a parasite that sucks the maternal instinct from white women. Or this comment by white, national, white nationalist and uh, race realist, sorry, J.F. Grapey, mm, take the G out and you're closer, where he actually makes a reverse eugenics argument claiming that eliminating Down syndrome babies would actually increase the number of Down syndrome babies because the parents would only make another one, not realising that that is just replacing one with another and that that's not how genetics work. This tweet by Chris Raygun, which I have no idea where he got this from, but apparently he thinks you should take photos with the Eiffel Tower while it's still there. LOL. Or this tweet by, you know, by moderate centrist Jack, Jack Rabbit from New Zealand saying, I'm pretty sure 90% of feminism slash non-binary can be cured with a good ploughing from the opposite sex. Which makes me wonder what the other 10% are requiring. But if you're not happy with that uh, mansplained definition of feminism, let's go back to Paul Joseph Watson. A feminist is a woman who hates men because she is ugly on the inside and out and no one wants to be around her. This comment by Darlene is nothing really shocking about it, but it's one of these comments that's made so much better because of a 
a, a really horrific spelling error at the end. It's claiming that Antifa call themselves anti-fascists, but they call patriots Nazis and they call each other Conrad. I was unaware of this, Conrad. Stop McWhining on Twitter saying, OK, I call myself a Nazi. Doesn't mean I actually am one. And once again, it's to learn. Don't knock it till you try it because you can't understand whether or not you, you are really into a political ideology until you adopt it and live it as a full lifestyle. And how dare any of you sit there and call people what they claim to be. Rochester Proud Boys points out that Hitler's views align perfectly with those of Bernie Sanders if you switch Jews for the 1%, which brings into question the phrase align perfectly. Ian Miles Chong right back at us with another definition saying we already have female incels, they're called feminists. Eve Kaninen on Twitter, when I die and stand before the judgment seat of God, one of the things I'm going to say in my defence is I was part of Gamergate. Hashtag Gamergate. I bet you'll be well impressed. Ian Miles Chong back with another one. Labour wants people who don't have jobs to vote. How is that justice? That's a good question, Ian. Fuck the unemployed. This guy on one of my videos who, who tried to equate women who claim that they have been raped with people who claim that they have seen ghosts. Another reoccurring character in this video, Stefan Molyneux. Many people who fiercely oppose monopolies get angry if their partner has an affair. Think about it. And that is a dangerous thing, Stefan, for you to be telling your subscribers. Or this random guy called Charlie Knows who decided to attack Red Lobster and claims that he would be blocking their advertising until Milo Yiannopoulos' Twitter account was reinstated. To this day, I have no idea why. How about that time that the Twitter account, at Sweden, literally tweeted, is it okay to tell at Peter Sweden to go fuck himself? Chris Reagan back at you saying, you know when we didn't have Nazi rallies in the streets? Sometime before we started throwing that term around like it meant nothing. You're damn right, Chris. No Nazis ever marched anywhere until people started misusing the term. That is literally how that works. Following the Islamic terrorist attack at Manchester Arena, Davis Arini tweeted the multiple choice poll, what caused the hashtag Manchester bombing, climate change, sexism, Donald Trump or giving women the vote? Speaking of rational polls from the, uh, from the reason sceptics, Tara McCarthy, white nationalist, asks, considering what we call races are in fact subspecies, is race mixing borderline bestiality? I'll give you one guess as to what won the poll, and apparently it's not canon though. Charlie Squeak, who apparently lives in an alternate universe, says, I really dislike how modern communists are all anti-Nazi. Nazis and communists were allies once, and I think they still should be. Thank you for that, Chairman Squeak. And the great thing about Richard Spencer is occasionally he says things that are so true and ultimately get him alienated by those on the, on the right who don't want you to think they're on the right. I've said it over and over again that Milo, Sargon, Lauren Southern and Gavin types people can be great entry points for the alt-right. Mark underscore UKIP literally asking a guy, why do all academics have an obsession with evidence and statistics? Don't quote that crap at me, I'll stick to my own views. He's literally admitting he's not interested in evidence or statistics. When a user on Twitter questioned whether this guy called Wicked Asshole one you know, thought that probably is the sort of guy who thought a clitoris is a dinosaur, Wicked Asshole one responded with, I know what a clit is, fucktard. Dot, dot, dot part of the female's sexual organ. I'm just wondering of his use of the dot dot dot. That's the bit that I love most about that one. This is a tweet by Peter Sweden saying about how Norwegian children behave compared to UK kids. Apparently Norwegian kids run around and laugh, whereas UK kids are much more serious. It's nice to know Peter Sweden spends so much time observing and watching and staring at your children. But don't worry, he's not the only one. So does white nationalist Ramsey Paul, saying one of my happy memories of Hungary was seeing a group of first grade school children in Budapest. They were all white Hungarians. 
How about that time that Paul Joseph Watson did an interview for a magazine and in it he confessed that he had a, he had a, he had a disorder that caused him to eat paper and when the magazine reported it as he told them he then accused them of falling for his epic lol joke and it was fake news. Yes, fake news are the people who report things that you tell them during an interview, Paul. In the why you shouldn't punch a Nazi debate, this guy, why does peacefully advocating for genocide justify physical assault? But this is the top one from Mark Dyson. I just called the Baltimore police to report the Kill Trump song by Abdel Ibrahim and they said they didn't care and hung up on me. I have never supported the police in my life. Well done, Mark. Peter Sweden again, being a right winger in Britain now is like being a Jew in the 1930s. They are going after people they don't like based on ideology. I know, it's almost like it's a more justified disagreement. That time that Dave Cullen, aka YouTube edgelord, shitlord, whatever, computing forever, literally took a picture of himself staring forlorn at a toilet in which any gender could go and actually shared it as if this was the end of civilization. I'm not even joking, what an absolute prick. Because he's the kind of knob who thinks that men and women sharing toilets is a problem, not weirdos who stand outside, stare at them and take photographs and then post them on Twitter. Stefan Molyneux again, reason and evidence destroys socialism, therefore socialists destroy reason and evidence. And that is called postmodernism. What wonderful logic there. It's a great, it's a nice round, it's almost a circular piece of logic. After someone tweeted out an article claiming that EU lawmakers call for a federal union of European states, this guy, called Finn Nationalist, managed to, pre managed to read between the lines and, dis and interpret it in a way that even I can't fucking manage, no matter how much acid or crack cocaine I smoke. The time Lauren Southern made this video, How To Be Single, for her subscribers, yeah right, like they need any fucking help, babe. That time a Twitter account called Da Fura 88 threatened, uh, uh, threatened someone who was responding to Sargon but with death and by setting them on fire and Sargon, who's totally not a sympathiser for Nazis, uh, actually liked the tweet. That time that Katie Hopkins tweeted out this in response to the Manchester uh, Arena terrorist attack claiming that we need a final solution and she misspelt Manchester in the hashtag. That time that Tommy Robinson you know, told, a told a Muslim girl on Twitter that she's pretty fit and she pointed out to him that she was only 15. That time that Alex Jones thought that the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign logo was actually symbolic of the attack on the World Trade Centers because he doesn't understand what how H's work. That time that white nationalist Tara McAfee finally had a massive epiphany and she knows, hang on, it seems to me that you know a lot, quite a lot of people on the alt-right seem to hate women. I know. Isn't it a fucking shocking, darling? Right? Welcome to fucking planet Earth. This is what we call a crisis of faith. At that time, Paul Joseph Watson lamented that, that Patreon were deleting someone's account because they called traditional living uh, classify it as hate speech. By the way, the person who he's referring to promoting traditional living is this person, uh, wife with a purpose. Jews slash banking created the world wars, not Europeans. And she also once said, every time a white man uses porn, he's choosing to drain strength and energy from our people's future and give it to those who wish to destroy us. Yep, traditional, traditional values. Stefan Molyneux back with a banger. Was there such a thing as the friend zone before the existence of the welfare state? Yes, Stefan. Yes. That time that news broke that a Muslim woman was severely injured on her 21st birthday when someone, when a random assailant, threw acid in her face and Tommy Robinson immediately jumped on this, saying she must have been expressing freedom which is not allowed by many in the Muslim community. This is Britain, not Pakistan. A tweet that he very, very quickly regretted when it turned out that this was the geezer who actually threw acid in the woman's face, who is about as far away from, from Muslim and or Pakistani as you can possibly get. Following Hurricane Harvey in 2017, the uh, satirical French magazine Charlie Hebdo did an article, satir did a satirical article claiming that the victims of Hurricane Harvey were all neo-Nazis. 
and uh, American right-wing Republican Joe Walsh replied saying Charlie Hebdo make fun of everyone but Muslims cowards yes Charlie Hebdo make fun of everyone but Muslims cowards the first of many screenshots of War Corps 666 thumbnails I've got no commentary on them they just speak for themselves don't they they they're pretty awesome that time that Sargon of Akkad actually admitted he was a 9-11 truther because pff, two planes can't bring down th three buildings, which is funny because that's exactly, uh, yeah, that's that's not what happened, yeah. But ha speaking of Sargon, how about that time that the guy giving a, giving a speech at an English Defence League rally held up a picture of Sargon of Akkad and recommended that all the people there subscribe to him. Sargon of Akkad's subscriber base immediately shot up by 12. That time Lauren Southern got banned from Patreon and Jordan Peterson said that Patreon banning Lauren Southern was far more on ominous than any of her opinions in his estimation. One of Lauren Southern's opinions, by the way, is the Great Replacement, i.e. white genocide. But yes, Patreon banning her, that's much more worrying. So fucking red pilled, telling us that Corbyn is a dedicated postmodernist cultural Bolshevik. Even if he loses the, the election, he will still dedicate his life to turning kids transgender. Go on, Jeremy. That time, a Tommy Robinson fan publicly admitted that he hoped people who oppose Tommy Robinson get raped by Muslim grooming gangs. Another recurring character up here, Julian Assange, asking, did Marie Le Pen lose? The election in France, the French election, due to sexism. That's white nationalist, far right extremist Marianne Le Pen. Did she lose due to sexism? As you can see, the overwhelming majority of people said no. Following the b the bombings at the Manchester Arena, Janice Atkinson, a member of UKIP, literally said that it's in response to suicide, a suicide bombing that it's time to bring back the death penalty. I'll say that again. She wants to bring back the death penalty for suicide bombers. Stefan Molyneux back at us. Remember, ladies, the price of a lot of men when you are young is a lot of cats when you are old. Don't promise us with a good time, Stefan. Speaking of former UKIP members and Twitter, this woman ran as a UKIP member in one of the local councils. Six million Jews were supposed to have died in the last war. Always sixes. Not very imaginative, these vials. That time that Anne Coulter said the real problem was that many men have no choice but to rape because they have no opportunities to date attractive women. This classic tweet by Mike Cernovich, have you guys ever tried raping a girl without using force? Try it, it's basically impossible. Date rape does not exist. I'm not joking, this is something he literally said, he, he thought that wrote it down, tweeted it out, and thought, yeah, nailed it. Julian Assange here trying to make out that he's some sort of oppressed class. Why? Because he doesn't have a blue tick on Twitter. Oh, yes, you are so part of the proletariat, Julian. You are part of the great unwashed, my brethren. That time that a right-wing YouTube channel and independent media outlet, Rebel Media, tried to prove that they were not at all right-wing by getting the one black guy in their office to make a video called The Alt-Right White Nationalists Are Stupid. As you can see from the ratings on the video, wasn't hugely popular. It's 2017. Racism has been dead for decades, says a white man. I want to live in a world where people wearing swastikas or rainbows or black power shirts can coexist without physically attacking each other. I never thought I'd say this, ladies and gentlemen, but that is political correctness gone fucking mad. Well, that, this comment by a black guy who hates transgender people so much that he's starting to sympathise with white nationalists who want segregation. Queen Alexandra, who claims that unless you can prove that these Twitter accounts that claim to be Nazis are not just people you disagree with, then no, there are no Nazis on Twitter. I can only assume there is another Twitter out there somewhere that this woman is using. Dave Rubin actually asking the question, remember when comics were funny? Yes, I can, Dave. You, on the other hand... 
That time that WikiLeaks gave up trying to hide their overt anti-Semitism and just came out and fucking said it right out loud. Another one by Katie Hopkins following the Manchester bombings in 2017. My children say they would rather be shot than die slowly by nail bomb. Which su suggests that Katie Hopkins is actually asking her children that question and asking to get their, in order to get their opinion. Of course, she doesn't realise that the reason her children feel that way is nothing to do with terrorism or multiculturalism. It's because their mum is Katie fucking Hopkins. One of the biggest stories exposed by Alex Jones during the 2016 election, Hillary Clinton to show up at debate as hologram which, as we know, literally happened. Let me just do a quick rhyme before I lead in this next one. Roses are red, your mum is kinky. Nigel Farage actually defends the use of the word chinky, because of course he does. This guy who is far too honest for his own good. I don't even think I know what feminism is. All I know is that I hate it. Thank you, ma mate, for being honest. Jiminy Cricky on Twitter saying either the Nazi hatred of the Jews was justified or it wasn't, but nobody successfully explained that to the Nazis. Yes, that was the problem. During all the to all of those during that 13, 14 years that they were in power, no one was able to come up with a rational or reasonable justification as to why they shouldn't be exterminating the Jews. That time that James Damore, who was that dork who got fired from Google for writing that manifesto, decided to come out and say what we've all been thinking, which is, yes, the KKK is horrible and I don't support them, but can we admit that their internal title names are cool? E.g. Grand Wizard. Not my personal favourite, James. I personally think Exalted Cyclops is a much better one. That time that Rouge V claimed that gay people did not exist in Eastern Europe until three years prior, and since then they have been multiplying like mogwais in a monsoon. This story is awful, and you should definitely not laugh at this, but following the uh, shooting at a mosque in Quebec, a fake Reuters account posted a tweet claiming that the shooter was a guy called Davis or MJ Orini, and... Uh, which they spelt Aurini wrong, which you know pissed him off, and that was t and one of the people who retweeted that or shared that tweet was John Green. Again, do not laugh; it's not funny. That time, mansplaining got taken to another level when a Donald Trump supporter tried to explain to a f a female journalist where her vagina was, which she corrected him by saying she had already figured that out. Yet again, Dave Cullen, a.k.a. Computing Forever, back, sh showing us exactly that he, A, doesn't understand how nationality works or how population predictions work. This wonderful quote by Jordan Peterson, There is nothing noble about masturbating to pornography. Thank you, you fucking junky twat. Yet again, Hill Dog getting exposed by Alex Jones. What drugs will Hillary take for the debate? We still don't know. That time Charlie Kirk lamented that he was at a Starbucks this morning and the baristas had their approved gender pronouns. We are creating a society of people waiting to be offended. What offends you, Charlie? Oh, God, I don't know. People being, you know, accepted and feeling comfortable in the workplace. This guy, a Sargon of a Card fan, explaining to Sargon that Theresa May was slash is a social justice warrior, not a Tory. And I can't bust on him too much because that is still nowhere near as bad as Peter Sweden who topped him by claiming that Theresa May is a crypto communist. But even that one's probably not as mental as yet again the time Alex Jones claimed that Pope Francis has converted to Islam. Right, but it's nowhere near as hilarious as the time that Paul Elam made a video directed at the Vaginocrats, which is really a term I wish had caught on. Dick Sloth, who is quite frankly doing a great disservice to the name Dick, SJWs wish they could do to us what, they, what Mao did to China. They can't because of Gamergate. Yes, that is what, that is what they needed, the people, the millions who died under Mao, if only they'd had a hashtag. That time that Breitbart.com wrote an article shared by white nationalist Anne-Marie Waters claiming that many migrants will never have seen toilet paper before. Don't worry, any of that come over here now, not that they can, but if they could, they wouldn't fucking see any anyway. Back with Alex Jones again, yes, with this scientific study that I'm pretty sure he definitely, definitely has not 
chose to misrepresent in any way, but it's a study that proves people are now more brain dead than goldfish. The Christian skeptic points out that I don't recall Joan of Arc ever whining about a mythical wage gap or a patriarchy. You know, that's because she was too busy screaming, holy fuck, my ass is on fire. More pressing issues were at hand for her, I feel, my friend. Vomit boy on Twitter. Well, if you guys are going to call me a Nazi, even if I'm not one, I may as well become one since you insist so much that I am a Nazi. Yes, that is the grown up and mature way to deal with people who misrepresent and try to slander you. Just do it, become exactly what they claim, thus proving them right. Alex Jones versus Hillary exposed. Look at this. Sick Hillary Clinton wears heavy winter coat. I know, in November. What the fucking hell's going on there? Wearing a coat outdoors. It's, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just, there's something there, man. Fucking hell. Yet another awesome Warcorp 666 thumbnail and video title. Again, no comment, just it is what it is. Joy, Jasmine and Emma from the Twitter account ban male votes. Men cannot connect with the concept of social justice as they have never been an oppressed group. What about men who are part of an oppressed group? Like, you know, ethnic minorities, religious minorities, gay people, disabled. Oh, no, just men. men. Taking away the vote from them, perhaps only for 20 to 30 years, would allow them to understand this. Good idea. How are you going to bring that in? Oh, of course, right. Also, women make for better, more progressive leaders as a whole. This is true. I mean, just look at, look at Britain. Look at the two female prime ministers we've had. You know, flawless, progressive to a fault. The best thumbnail video title combination Alex Jones ever made, the end. That time that Roosh V, and I'm not joking, actually asked whether or not The Rock was alpha or beta. Right, The Rock! This sad sack of shit standing somewhere in the street with a sign saying feminist witches and soy boy bitches. And, but, you know, it's not even that that's the most tragic. It's the fact he's put LMFAO on his own protest sign. I mean, really? Right? This cunt. The time Davis Orini found a fidget spinner. The time Thunderfoot got annoyed at Ronald McDonald for some reason. The time Julian Assange claims that capitalism plus atheism plus feminism equals sterility, which equals migration, and then starts pissing and moaning about EU birth rates. Hmm. Definitely, yeah. Definitely nothing. Uh, yeah, nothing. Nothing horrible going on there. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That time that Nigel Farage had a go at the World Health Organization for being just another club of clever people who want to bully us and tell us what to do. Why? Because the World Health Organization had the gall to fucking point out that tobacco and smoking it is very bad for you. Something that Nigel Farage disagrees with. A man who has had cancer of his testicles. He probably even smokes through his dick hole just to trigger the libs. That time that the Daily Mail comment section managed to turn a story about poachers striking at a European zoo and shooting a rhinoceros to co and connected it with immigrants coming over to the UK and killing swans. That time a vegan account on Twitter claimed that, that if you eat animals you can't be an environmentalist, a feminist, animal lover, non-violent or a veterinarian. Got any others? That time a woman who was a white nationalist complained that all of the packets of diapers at the local supermarket had pictures of black babies on them, which she seemed to think means that you couldn't use the diapers on white babies. Just FYI, you can. That time that Paul Joseph Watson shared a video by Jenny McDermott in which she claimed that feminists want to kill all male babies, which was totally serious and not her trolling, this genuine headline on an outsider news agents uh, in Plymouth for a local newspaper. Nothing funny about the uh, headline itself, but hey, look at the bottom. Free sausage roll, mate! That time that Katie Hopkins tried to claim that conservative women feel as if they've got a constant target on their head. Which is interesting, because I always thought that, you know, feelings was not something you lot were interested in. That time Jordan Peterson said, Women, if you usurp men, they will rebel and fail, and you will have to jail or enslave them. Jordan, stop giving them ideas! 
That time Alex Jones tried to own and expose globalists as hypocrites asking why do they want to control Earth when astronomers have just discovered there are trillions of planets in the universe. And the thing I love about this one is the fact that Alex Jones thinks that the discovery of there being trillions of planets in the universe is only a recent fucking finding. The Daily Mail comment section summed up in two comments. Everything you need to know, every story, it applies. That time a guy tried to argue that the concentration, people in the concentration camps, they weren't death camps, it wasn't extermination, they died of starvation. Why? Because they ran out of resources. Why? Because the Allies bombed their infrastructure and they weren't able to get them supplies. See? So it's, it's the Allies' fault. Why I'm a vegan Nazi now, not an anti-Semite or pro-Hitler, just pro-truth. There is so much going on there, I don't know what to think. That, that is a post by a group called the Vegetable Police. Anybody ever wonder why the inside of a woman's vagina resembles, rem resembles the inside of a snake's mouth almost identically? Some of the women, if, assuming you've been with any women, which I think is unlikely, but if you have, I think you, should, you know, they need to go to the doctors. It was a snake that caused a woman to deceive man in the beginning. Now her body parts that resemble that snake's mouth deceive men now. And what I love about this one is not just how bonkers mental that is, it's that hashtag, right? Think outside the box. I don't think this, if this guy meant this as a joke, that is genius. One more, go on, one more war corpse thumbnail, right, and 6.8 million views, I hope you had your fucking ad revenue on. That time that Onision tried to shame people who were expressing their fear and uh, distress and upset and, you know, concern over the Manchester Arena terrorist attack because apparently people die of cancer every day and nobody mentions that. Yeah, okay, groomer. But it's, but it's still a little bit more preferable to that guy T, who'd, whose response to at the Manchester Arena terrorist attack at an Ariana Grande concert was, nail bombs is better than race mixing pop culture degeneracy. Yes, apparently a terrorist attack that killed children is preferable than an Ariana Grande concert. The following screenshots is of a, set, a, a load of t-shirts that I found on Amazon, right? And if there's any anyone out there who is from the right, right, you can go, I, I don't know whether these are still available on there, but this is a selection of uh, stuff you can buy on Amazon, genuine t-shirts, you know. I oil my guns with liberal tears, veterans before refugees, political correctness has ruined everything, political correctness has ruined education, do you need both those? Right? Ben Shapiro for president, and I proudly stand for the national anthem. Well done, your legs work. Annoy a liberal, use facts and logic. Cry about it, snowflakes. Political correctness destroys conversation. Political correctness is the new plague. Make speech free again. Which is why, if, if it wasn't, you wouldn't be allowed to put down a t-shirt, you dopey fucking prick. I'd rather be a nut job than a, than a liberal with no nuts and no job. It's a bit com it's a bit clunky that one to be fair. Political correctness has gone too far. I think we've got that. Can you get all of them? Like on but you know, I think political correctness has ruined everything. Covered covered all this. I identify as an attack helicopter. Prepare to be triggered. Since when is it wrong to be proud of being American? There should be a question mark there. Trump, fuck your feelings. Yes, Donald Trump, the most uh, you know, he is inoffendable, isn't he? The founding fathers would be proud of Trump, right? I'm a proud American man. Liberals offend me. Legalize freedom. Gary Johnson 2018. Raised right. You know. Finally, someone with balls. This story from 2018. Virginia man put copyright on homemade child pornography. Now, two reasons for this. Number one, like the, the, I thought I should say this because you'd have put your money on this being Florida man. But also, who did he think was gonna con was gonna file a DMCA? Did he honestly think anyone was gonna like you know? What a weirdo! The time Paul Elam decided to tell everybody that he doesn't care whether you like the fact that he's white male and an American nationalist, which is ironic because all of those are qualities that no one gives a fuck about. Paul Elam, you know, just FYI, there are a million and one reasons to hate you. Good reasons, 
None of which involve you being a man or white or American. All of them involve you being an absolute fucking cunt. This tweet that Davis Orini sent to a woman on Twitter, following which her fucking ovaries prolapsed. This guy arguing that the real problem with drunk driving is not drunk driving, it's when drunk drivers crash, therefore drunk driving should not be illegal, only drunk accidents. These two videos uploaded literally several months apart. First one, I'm not a lesbian. Next one, okay, maybe I'm a lesbian. Now, the, what I want to know is what was the ponage video that fucking happened that someone made between those two videos? That time someone made a dating uh, site called Where White People Meet For White People By White People. And yes, that is an account that existed on the site. I have no, I have no idea who made it. Ellen Hander saying, I love Anne Frank. I don't believe you represent her well. I'm sure she would say that all lives matter. That was a reply to the Anne Frank Center. Tim Paul finding any way he can to play the victim. The words mansplain and manspread are hate speech. Yet I see so many people who oppose hate speech using these words. Isn't it amazing how when you like, you know, you, you take two words and then define them as something that nobody believes them to be. And then you can recategorize them and then you're, you can claim people are hypocrites. You fucking bald little twat. Women do most catcalling. Women also benefit from mugging and encourage men to do it. Thank you, friendly bastard. I had no idea. Mosques are illegal in the United States. Look it up. Law passed by Congress decades ago. Thank you for that one, Don Deplorable. These next ones are some of my favourite ones. This was during the time that the Wolfenstein, uh, the new Wolfenstein and Far Cry 5 game came out and the alt-right used this as a t chance to shit their proverbial knickers and act like a bunch of whiny, sensitive, thin-skinned little bitches. Wolfenstein's marketing seems to be encouraging violence against real people though. This game and Far Cry 5 cast their enemies as thinly veiled metaphors for Trump supporters. I don't think anyone is offended. <laughs> yeah, right. They don't want agendas pushed on them, but they are. So the fact that they are should, is offensive to you. Looks like it wants to... Wolfenstein looks like it wants to push something now. Yes, Wolfenstein, that game that's never, ever been about fighting the Nazis. Also, I have to ask a question. Why, why is it such a bad thing, even if they were? Because I was under the impression, as you, know, you lot were saying during Gamergate, that video games have absolutely no influence on you know this was the objection wasn't it you know video games they're just video games they don't they, have, they don't they don't make you more violent or they don't, they don't affect or they don't you know inform your you know your perspective or your politics or opinions so what does it matter what are you so scared of it's almost like you lot are full of shit that time sargon of a card became such a hypocrite that thunderfoot had to come out in defense of anita sarkeesian this picture of Richard Spencer at one of his uh, live events, I have no idea what he's doing and I don't want to know because as far as I'm concerned, it's Gangnam Style. Why was there a Sharia march but no march against real issues like women's rights and the oppression of gamers and ugly people? That time that Twitter accidentally suspended its own support account. That time that Sargon of Akkad commented on one of my videos and I was relieved when he informed me that you're not an SJW man because he still liked me back then. So what's the difference between a Nazi and a trans woman? One of these humans deserves to live and the other doesn't. Bernie says healthcare is a right. Why stop there? Don't I also have a right to a job? A right to a meal? A right to housing? These are examples of people on the right almost getting the point. That time, a men's rights activist tried to compare family court for men to Auschwitz. That time that Paul Joseph Watson tried to prove that there are constantly terrorist attacks going on in Malmo in Sweden by showing this picture of a fucking firework going off. These two bitches saying they call us Nazis because we are white as you stand in front of a fucking swastika! Claire Corr? 
Former member of the BNP who was so racist she got kicked out of it. The soldiers of feminism are fornicating sluts, having extramarital sex to distract men from marriage in order to undermine the patriarchy. They really... Don't you hate it when, when someone on the right makes a straw man about an ideology you believe in, but it actually sounds better? And Alex Jones, you know, putting the nail in Hillary Clinton's coffin when during one of the debates he reported, a fly lands on Hillary Clinton's face during debate. Full report. I think the words slow news day have never been more applicable. Jordan Peterson merely asking how the hell does consent work? He's not sure, you know, which at his age makes me wonder. He's probably raped someone. This is an example of Mark Dice poning himself two years in advance when in 2017 Unless Wonder Woman can cook a good pot roast, she's no woman at all, am I right? Two years prior, yeah, I don't date much. As this guy says, what is worth in the broken heart? And this woman replies, menstrual pain. And this guy says, as a guy, I think menstrual pain is a myth. This guy, who's got a swastika in his icon, is called Extreme Logic. His Twitter tag is Darwin Warrior. I have I had IRL sex many times. When you are six foot two, strongly built, and have an IQ of 181, it is difficult to live the trad life, even though I wish I did sometimes. Dude, there is flexing and then there's flexing, right? I mean, even rice gum would read this and go and go, bro, tone it down. This, which is literally, I'm not shitting you, this was, or at least it was a couple about a year or so ago when I took the screen cap. This is Blair White's merchandise. Right, just, I'm going to leave this one up here for a bit so you can see how, I mean, literally, this, you could have done this, with, you could have done this blindfolded with one hand. There's so little effort put into this. If I was a fucking subscriber of hers, I would be a fucking offended beyond all belief. Davis Orini tweeting this quote, A real Catholic man can make his woman dewy by reading scripture to her. Then quoting it as one of his quotes, Davis MJ Orini, which... It's funny because that's literally what Twitter is for, Davis. You don't need to put that this quote is by you, you just tweet it out. This guy on Twitter, Fox from the West, who was angry at someone because they refused to explain to him why genocide was bad. This cunt, who, let's be fair, might have a point, worryingly. That time that CNN were forced to put the following fact check addendum after a member of the Trump White House claimed that uh, that President Assad of Syria using chemical weapons is worse than Hitler because even Hitler didn't sink to the level of using chemical weapons and they had to put the in parentheses Hitler gassed millions that's the level we're at folks that time on a St George's Day when the Daily Express literally went with this headline asking who was St George, where was he born, and did he really slay a dragon? That time that Infowars called out Gateway Pundit for fake news and said they should be ashamed of themselves, and I shit you not, they did it with a straight face, they weren't even fucking around. This photo of a Trump-supporting alt-right shitlord on YouTube, I can't remember his name, but this is real, folks, and this photo is amazing, because ev I, have been, I have been looking at it now for four years, and every time I look at it, I find something else that I didn't see before. It is incredible. But it's not as incredible as that time that Alex Jones was trying to sell a weight loss supplement and decided to promote it using himself as the before and after. He must have got in five hours early to squeeze into those jeans. So if you take his weight loss supplement, you go orange, you get a new watch, and your jeans get darker. If you're wondering how Alex Jones is doing these days, I can tell you he's doing just fine. He's having a normal one. But let's not forget that time I was a savage on Twitter when a woman who'd just given birth to her third baby in three years tr used it as an excuse to fat shame other women and I pointed out, who are you to criticise people for not looking after their bodies? Three kids in three years, I bet I could put my fist inside your cunt and flip a coin without it touching the sides. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings an end to part one of a decade of screenshots I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, please support me on Patreon, where you'll get lots. There's lots of exclusive material that's going to be available on there, and lots of perks down there for you. 
And other than that, please uh, like, comment, and etc. My name is Dick Coughlin, also known as Brother Neuro, and where there's no sense, there's no feeling. Good night, may God be less.